What's up my friends, welcome back! I have a great review for you guys. This is the new DLP printer from FL Sun, the FL Sun Model S. So why should you buy a DLP printer? Well, if you're looking for this kind of precision as you can see here on these examples, you can't achieve that with a normal FDM printer and SLA printers are very expensive. This kind of DLP printers are the middle way between SLA precision and FDM low price. First of all, guys, I'm not a maniac of precision, because all of my DIY projects don't require that much precision. I mean, I always design cases, big parts, RC toys that don't require that much precision at all. But now, I'm working on a project that needs very small gears and very high precision models, so I would like to use my own designs. So for that, the best way and the least expensive is a DLP printer. In this video, I will show you how this kind of DLP printer works, I'll make a review of the FL Sun Model S, test it, show you how to use it and the amazing precision. So let's get started! What's up my friends, welcome back! Here I have the box of the FL Sun Model S DLP printer. Inside, you will get the printer that is already assembled and has a metal case made out of two parts. The bottom part with all the printing mechanism and the top part used to cover the printer while it's working and also to cure the finished parts with the UV light it has on the inside top part. You will also get the power supply which is quite small since you only have one motor to operate, the SD card with some examples on it and the bottle of 500ml of UV sensible resin. You will also have some latex gloves and an air filter, since this could get quite smelly. That's all you get with this kit. Before we start with the printer, let me explain a bit how DLP printer works. We have a resin that hardens when exposed to UV light, and that resin is kept in a printing bed, and the bottom of this bed is transparent. Below we have a UV light source, that usually are some ultraviolet LEDs. So, if that UV light exposes the resin, you will get a full layer of hard material. But for that, between the light and the resin, a mask with the shape that you want to print is placed. So now the resin hardens in that shape. You harden one layer, lift a bit the Z-axis and expose the next layer. Then the next and so on, till you have all the layers printed. To achieve the shape of the mask, an LCD is used. You know that LCDs work with polarized pixels. When the pixel is vertical, light can pass, but when it's horizontal, perpendicular to the light source, the light can pass. So the LCD will create the mask. Easy, right? So there inside we have the UV light, and here the LCD screen, and the resin bath. So let's get started with the printer. Plug the power cable and power the printer on, and then remove the black acrylic plate that's over the bed and put back the screws. On the screen, you will have the first calibrating instructions. Now make sure that the aluminum printing plate is straight and fixed in place with these two screws. Now loose these four screws on the side of the plate and make sure that it can move freely up and down. Now select next on the touch screen. The Z axis will home itself and get lower till it reaches this optic switch. Now the printer is homed. Tight back the screws and then press done on the screen and we are good to go. So here we have the main menu of the printer. Ok guys, now go to the menu and lift the print bed a bit, so we could pour some resin. Now open the resin bottle and fill the bed around one third. Now you have to home the axis once again and we are ready to print. Insert the SD card because that has some examples on it. Go to the menu and then open the SD card and here select the MMS files. I first selected the zombie hunting model. Select it and then press start and there you go. The printing process takes a few hours, but not because the printer is slower than normal FDM printers, but because the layer height is around 0.05mm, which is amazing, but we have many more layers to print. The printed part end up great. I'm amazed with the details of this printed part. When the printing is finished, you have to clean the remaining liquid resin with some alcohol and then place the part under UV light or in direct sun for a few minutes. For this small part, 20 minutes under UV light was more than enough. The UV light uses the same power supply as the printer, so turn the printer off. 
cover the resin bed for a while so the resin stays good, power the top part of the case and place the part below the UV light. As you can see the details are amazing and of course I've printed more parts to see the precision of the printer and we will see those later. Now here is the nice thing about this printer. It doesn't use normal G-code as FDM printers, so slicing models for it is not that easy and there is very few information about it for now. But the printer has a slicer code integrated. All you have to do is to copy the STL file on the SD card. Now here on the menu select the slicer here. Select the default one. You can edit the settings. For now I put a layer height of 0.05 mm. I set the first layer exposed time for over 100,000 milliseconds because the first layer must be harder. I set an amount of 5 first layers and the rest of the exposing time to 13 seconds. Save the file and exit. As you can see now on the screen we have the default slicer selected. Now select a file. Click here and select the SDL file that you have just copied on the SD card. Now all you have to do is to press print. First the printer will slice the part and then it starts to print. Pretty easy right? If you want to add supports to the print you might want to use a PC software to do that manually. Here you can see how each layer is printed with UV light but for this example with no resin so you could see the process. Now let's talk about the machine. First of all it is very low noise compared with FDM printers. I could even leave the printer working all night and didn't bother me. All that sounds is the back fan. You almost can hear the Z-axis motor movement. The maximum print size is 107 by 68 by 200 mm height. You can use any color UV sensible photopolymer resin with this printer. The bat is removable so you could clean it. Also make sure to store back the resin once you finish printing and maybe use a filter so no hardened parts get back into the bottle. The printing plate is made out of aluminum and you could also remove it so it is very easy to remove the print. The touch screen makes the control very easy. One interesting thing about DLP printers is that if you print 3 objects or any amount at the same time it will take the same amount of time as for only one object. With FDM printers if you print 3 objects it will take 3 times more to finish the print. But in case of DLP printing the delay is given by the exposed time for each layer. How big is the layer doesn't matter since it will harden at the same time. Now I've made a few more prints. Here I have this castle that I've downloaded from Thingiverse and the amount of details is amazing. You can see the windows of the castle and even the small stairs. I've also printed the example sphere that you have on the SD card. The print process is upside down and as you can see this model has print support and the final part looks great. I've also printed a part of the Eiffel Tower because the printer had an error and also one of my maker coins and as you can see the details are perfect. You can see even the tiny letters. And of course I've also printed a Banshee and the print quality once again is amazing. You can distinguish each of the parts of the boat and the print itself is very smooth. I am very very amazed with the precision of these prints. Now about that last error in the case of the Eiffel Tower. Make sure you never run out of resin, otherwise the print will go on but the printed part will stop there. Also make sure that you have a long exposure time for the first layers and the bed plate is screwed in place, otherwise the print will stick more to the plastic film than to the printing aluminum plate. I've had some prints that didn't stick well to the aluminum plate, so I've increased the first layer exposing time to 100 seconds and also pass a bit some sandpaper on the aluminum plate and that worked out. So what do I like about this printer? Well yeah it's amazing. It's not expensive compared with SLA printers so that is nice. The finished prints are perfect, I don't have any complaint about that. The bottom of the bed seems a bit fragile, never use metal tools with it. A spare part for this should be nice. So I search on the internet and this is called FAP film so you might want to buy one as a spare. Links are in the description. All you have to do is to remove the screws, put the new FAP film and tie the screws. Make sure that the film ends with a drummy look like this. One thing I don't like is that you can only see the print after an hour or so. Till then the print is hidden below the aluminum plate and if something went wrong at the beginning you can tell that. 
you have to wait to see the print. Maybe a transparent bed would be a better choice for this. Check the software you got on the SD card and the manuals for more details. Also, check my webpage electronoops.com for more photos of the prints. Below in the description you will find a link for the printer if you want to buy it. The price might change by the time you watch this video, could be less or could be more. I'll try to update always the lower price for it. Use the link below to buy the printer and also help my workshop at the same time. I really recommend this printer for very high detail and precision prints. So if you are a maker, engineer working on a new prototype or an artist that want to give life to the models that creates, this kind of printer will be perfect. One thing to have in mind, you can't control the infill for this printer. For example, for this Benchy file, the entire print is filled, so that is a lot of resin. If you want to save some material, you should first hollow your design before the print, as you can see here on this example. As you can see, the part is hollow. So guys, that's it. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If so, don't forget to click the like button like crazy and share this video with your friends. If you have any question about this video or any other, just leave it in the comment section below or my Q&A page. Also, don't forget to subscribe and watch all of my other great tutorials. And remember, if you consider helping my projects, check my Patreon page as well. Thanks again and see you later guys.